this is Cool Dude Clem here, and today I'm going to do a little video about how I do my cartoons. Now, I'm sure that some of you are wondering just why it is that I do my cartoons the way I do. A lot of that is to do with the way that I used to make my cartoons back when I started out around 1999. And Back then, all I had to do my cartoons on was a camcorder, a VHS VCR, and pens and paper. And of course a TV so I could see how it was going to look. But also back then, I had no way to do frame by frame animation, so whenever anything needed to move, I would use hidden levers and wires. So the whole thing was more sort of like puppets than it was actual animation but you know this is what got me started out doing cartoons and it's something I've enjoyed ever since okay so what I've got here is a replica of what I would have used back then so this is me my cartoon self drawn in the classic style with the round head and beady eyes and if we take a look at the head when I move this paper rod up and down you can see the mouth opening and closing and that's pretty simple how that works. The rod goes up, then it's folded around, and it comes out of a slit that I made in the mouth. So it looks like when I move the rod up and down, it looks like the mouth is opening and closing, and the character is talking. I know a lot of people confuse that with the tongue, but it is actually the mouth. That's not supposed to be the tongue coming in and out, that's actually supposed to be the mouth opening and closing. And as for the arms here, you can see they're joined together by a piece of wire and that way I can pose them however I want then I can pin the character down onto the stage and have the character look like he's talking by moving the mouth in time with what's being said now for the body facing the side it's pretty much the same thing pretty much the same deal going on with the head however the arm again the two parts of the arm are joined together by a piece of wire but this piece of wire it's also going through the body and it's attached to a rod on the other side of the body so when I move this rod up and down I can actually move the arm and so with the body facing the side I could move the arm as well as the mouth while the character was talking so you know it put a little bit more life into the character or at least that was the best I could do at the time so yeah I could put these characters on the background pose them how I wanted, and I would simply film it like that. Later on, I discovered a way that I could animate with a VHS. So what I did was, I would record for a few seconds, then I would stop the tape and get it queued up to record the next frame, then I would move everything around a little bit, record for a few seconds again, and so on. So, this way I could include a little bit of stop motion in my films, but most of it was still done with the puppet technique. Also, doing stop motion on a VHS recorder didn't really work out too good. Sometimes the colours would go all wonky, or sometimes it would just go completely black and white during the stop motion parts. And, yeah, I also wore out quite a few VHS machines in the process. Salvation did come along, however, when I got my first video capture card for my computer. I could connect my camcorder up to it, I could snap pictures of all the frames that I needed, then I could put them into the timeline in my video editor, and create an animation from that, and no more worn out VHS. It was around this time that I decided I'd ditch the puppet technique and do it all with stop motion. The thing is, I needed to figure out a way to make the characters look like they were talking. So what I did was, I made several different mouth shapes. There was one with the mouth half open, one with the mouth fully open, and one with the mouth in an O shape. And I would put them on the character's head. Then I would snap a picture of the character with the mouth closed, the mouth half open, and so on. Then I would put them onto the timeline depending on what syllable that character was saying at the time. 
So yeah, it took longer doing it that way, but it was well worth it. Even though Adobe Premiere did crash quite a few times in the process. But like I said, it was worth it. And it paved the way for the next incarnation of my cartoons when I got Adobe Flash. So some of you are probably saying, so you have Flash now, so why don't you use vector graphics? Well, here's the thing. I cannot draw with a mouse to save my life. I'm good with pens and paper, useless with a mouse. It's like it just won't follow my hand movements properly. And besides, I prefer the organic look of hand-drawn pictures anyway. So even though I'm using Flash to do my cartoons now, Everything is still drawn by hand. It was sometime during when I was doing the move, when I made the transition from stop motion to flash. So I needed to try to make it look the same. And there's one particular scene in that movie where some of it is done with stop motion and some of it is done in flash. So let's take a look at that scene and let's see if you can tell which part was done with stop motion and which part was done with flash. <laughs> Clement! Oh, Clement! It's time to wake up! Get up, you lazy boy! Right, that's it! Oh, good! You're awake. You better have a look at this. This came through the mail today. What? I don't believe this. Well, I'll leave you to read that. I'm going shopping. See you later. Oh, no, not again. Damn neighbours. As you can see, they look pretty close. There's a little bit of difference between the two, but I'm going to run that clip again, but I'm going to overlay a title so you know which part was done with stop motion and which part was done with flash. Clement! Oh, Clement! It's time to wake up! Get up, you lazy boy! Right. That's it. Ah! <coughs> oh. Um. oh, good. You're awake. You better have a look at this. This came through the mail today. What? I don't believe this. Well, I'll leave you to read that. I'm going shopping. See you later. Oh no, not again. Damn neighbours. Personally, I think the flash version has a little bit less charm than the stop motion version. But using flash just makes everything so much easier. So that brings us to where we are today. Now, I draw my cartoons the way I do because this is how I want them to look. This is my style. I mean, sure, I could draw every frame and make it look a bit more professional, but do you know how much time that would take? Not to mention the amount of pens and paper I would go through. Also, this style never really turns out too good. So doing an animation with separate bits and pieces is really the way to go for me. I mean, there's nothing wrong with animating in that style. South Park did it that way. Monty Python did it that way. A lot of kids' cartoons were done that way. So why shouldn't I do it that way? And also, a lot of people don't think I put any time or effort into my cartoons. To show you how much work actually goes into my cartoons, Let's go through a rundown of everything I have to do. So, first, I get everything drawn on paper. And this is just a 
tiny fraction of all the drawing I have to do to make one episode. You want to know how many drawings I have to do to make one episode? Here you go. And let me remind you again, this is just for one episode. All these drawings are just one episode. Then I've got to get that into the computer. So, I put those on my scanner. I open up PaintNet and the quiet image and adjust the levels so it looks nice and good. Then I open that in Paint and separate all those separate drawings into separate files. So next stop is Adobe Flash. And before I import any pictures into Adobe Flash, first thing I've got to do is draw a rectangle around the edge of the stage because when I start putting things in, that's going to hide where the edge of the stage is. So, you know, I want to make sure that everything is actually in the shot properly. And when that's done, I will then put in the sound for that particular scene that I'm doing. So I'll just drop that into the stage and then I'll lock that layer so I don't interfere with it. So now I'm ready to import the drawings. So, so I do import to stage and spread them all out. And you might have noticed that you can still see the blank paper around the edge of each drawing. But Flash is a really neat way to deal with that. So what I do is I select them all, then do break apart, and then I use the magic wand tool. And as you can see, when I click on the paper background, it disappears. Just like magic. Magic. So with all that done, they're ready to be turned into symbols. And symbols in Flash are, you know, they're much easier to work with. Symbols are pretty much everything, you know, they can be drawings, they can be buttons, they can be video clips, you know, pretty much anything. Plus, symbols have their own separate timeline. So, if I want to do something, say a talking head, I can make that drawing into a symbol, then I'll give that symbol a few frames of animation, and I'll draw the separate mouths in each frame, and then on the main timeline, I'll put the head on the stage if it's not in there already, resize it if I need to resize it, and I'll go through the timeline and I'll put a keyframe where each syllable is. And in each keyframe, I'll tell it which frame of the head animation to display. Now, animating frame by frame with a stop motion camera really used to be a pain in the butt. I mean, I would try to move something and it would move a whole bunch of other stuff with it, you know, it would catch on something and drag that along and... You know, if I messed up, I would have to do that whole animation all over again, but... That's not the case in Flash. So if I'm not happy with a piece of Flash animation, instead of having to start over, I can actually edit that piece of animation, and I can tweak it until it looks the way it should. Also a nice thing in Flash is I don't have to do the whole scene all at once, you know. I'll usually do the character animations first, and then put in the background. You know, I can do it in any order I like. It doesn't really, you know, Flash is very versatile that way. And also, as I can have all the different bits and pieces on separate layers, I can say, move this arm here, and it won't interfere with anything else. Another really nice thing about Flash is that I can bring things over from one project into another. So, Let's say I want to put a character in my project, and in another Flash project, I just happen to have that character already made, and I don't want to have to make it up again, I can just simply bring that character over from my other Flash project into the project I'm working with, and that saves a lot of time. And of course, I can either animate frame by frame, which is a lot more accurate, but takes more time, or I can do a tween, which would otherwise take a lot of time if it was done with frame-by-frame -frame animation. And also, I can combine tweening and frame-by-frame -frame animation, like you can see in this scene here. So, this is a scene from the Star Kids Episode 1. And you can see we got our guy here walking through the forest. And if we just open him up here, you can see that he is actually a symbol and is made with frame-by-frame -frame animation, and that's on a continuous loop. And the background, such as the trees and everything else, those are actually tweened objects, 
so it looks as if the camera is following him as he walks along. And you can also see a lot of things outside of the stage. You know, they pop into existence just before they get into the right side of the stage, and then they disappear as they leave the left side of the stage. You know, because you don't really need them when they're outside of the stage, so, you know, it just makes it a bit more tidy. But like this, you can see all the kinds of things going on that you normally wouldn't get to see. So, I hope that's cleared things up so you can see exactly just how much work goes into doing my cartoons. I hope this has been interesting, going through the history of my cartoons, seeing how they've evolved over the years. And anyway, that's just about it for this video. So, I'll see you next time, and until next time, goodbye. And if we take a look at the head, when I move this paper rod up and down, you can see the mouth opening and closing.